October has come again, my little creeps, and with it all the joy of the Hollow Eve season. Admittedly, this year's been scary enough with everything else going on. <laughs> but that's that real existential horror. We, we don't want that. We're here for the fun stuff. The fun kind of horror. The carving jack-o'-lanterns with the family kind of horror. The bad costume and lots of candy kind of horror. The kind of horror that even your Lutheran grandma can get behind. Harold, it's that time of the year again. I'll get the gun, Dolores. So, in honor of my favorite holiday season, and to keep my mind off the entire world coming to an end, I thought it'd be fun to go back and look at one of my favorite horror games from the last couple years. I thought we should look at The Evil Within. The Evil Within was originally released back on October 14, 2014, and was the first showing from Tango Gameworks, a Japanese-based studio founded back in March of 2010. It's currently a sister studio to Bethesda Softworks, the guys that used to be cool, and owned by ZeniMax, the guys that just caught up by Microsoft. Despite their relatively young age as a studio and no prior releases under their belt, I remember there being some buzz around Evil Within's release, as its director and studio executive producer is none other than Shinji fucking Mikami. You know, the mind behind classic horror touchstone and groundbreaking genre-defining Resident Evil. Seriously, I don't know how much people care about the names behind the games they play, but this guy is the real deal and behind so many great games like Resident Evil's 1, 2, and 3, the odd but still classic Dino Crisis games, Resident Evil again with Code Veronica and its sequel, the original Devil May Cry, Resident Evil again but better looking, Resident Evil One Last Time but a prequel, Resident Let Me Change the Landscape of Gaming Forever Evil 4, Killer 7, God Hand, Vanquish, Shadows of the Damned, and a Ace 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 Attorney? What? Objection! Never mind that. My point being goof troop for the SNES over here has made a game or two in his time. And needless to say, I understand people being a little excited for the grandfather of horror games coming back for one last hurrah. So after my nearly two and a half-ish pages of preamble out of the way, the real question is then, how did he do? The Evil Within is a beautifully gory combination of grisly viscera draped upon a dreary and appropriately dark atmosphere. Settings are moody and quiet, with an almost noir-like essence emanating from the protagonist, but can quickly break and shift in chaotic spirals of hellish noise and palm-drenching panic. All of which brings this feeling of fighting for survival against a backdrop of mystery, desperately and only barely scraping by with each clue bringing more questions than answers. You're caught in this web and realizing that it's getting larger and larger by the moment, and it's bigger than you could have possibly have imagined. Needless to say, yeah. My pros on the undercutting thereof aside though, The Evil Within does create an appropriately gloomy and oppressive atmosphere for itself with some cool, memorable settings, and while the graphics are fairly dated looking, even for the time, it has this aesthetic of twisted and tortured flesh that carries across the entire game, making everything feel very connected and cohesive, like it all belongs together. My only real complaint with the presentation so far is in the sound design, as much of it feels a bit shallow and even a bit forgettable actually. 
While weapons have a sufficient punch to their sound design and the environment elements never feel out of place, it all seems very standard with nothing really worth remembering. Even the OST is underwhelming as the only tracks are note I thought being a beautiful rendition of Claire de Lude. And the song that plays during the opening, Long Way Down. With all that in mind though, while it doesn't add much in my opinion, I also think it doesn't take away either, so in the end it's a neutral balance, it evens itself out. Alright. Since this is an interactive medium, let's talk gameplay, because the name of the game here is Survival Horror, and that can mean a lot of different things to different people. Really, Survival Horror is kind of like a cheesecake if you really think about it. There's a lot of subtlety to it and so many different flavors. I mean, there's chocolate cheesecake, caramel, hazelnut, French vanilla, strawberry, Oreo Dream Extreme. Uh, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, my point being that like a cheesecake, there's plenty of flavors and we can all agree these are pretty much the same thing. But if you really like vanilla caramel and someone hands you a lemon raspberry cream, you're not going to be very happy about it. Really, it's a scale from like Dead Space 1 with the focus being on the scary to Dead Space 3, which is all about the combat as far as gameplay is concerned and I know a lot of people aren't too happy about the latter end of that scale. However, that more action-packed kind of survival horror does have a place as long as it isn't changing an entire franchise to suit that type of game. Thankfully, The Evil Within seems to know what it wants for its gameplay way up at the start of this, and it falls into that latter end of the spectrum, and that's okay. Its chapters have reasonably long linear levels that open up to larger areas, either focus on puzzles or combat or some combination of both. There are some smaller sections that encourage stealth but honestly isn't that big a focus and it's usually just a preamble to a fight by thinning some enemies out. However, usually you'll just be focusing on what I call the three D's of domination. Dashing, dodging, and doming. Now, I know that may sound a tad bit shallow, but I do actually really enjoy the combat mechanics here. There are a couple weapons and they all feel different and require you to change your approach depending on what you have ammo for. My personal favorite being the crossbow in case you're wondering. However, there's plenty of different encounters to change up that gameplay loop and encourage you to think on your feet in the middle of a fight. It's enjoyable, fast, and very kinetic. <laughs> Now, here's the part of the video where I'm not actually sure what I want to say, because I'm really torn on how I feel about the whole story from The Evil Within. On one hand, it is creepy and genuinely intriguing. It really draws me into the narrative of what's going on. I even remember finishing some chapters just chomping at the bit to know what's going to happen and where this is all going. On the other hand though, it's kind of all bad and boring and a bit ridiculous. It's, it's just a real dichotomy here, and I don't say this because I want to be contrarian, but really, I think it's both. What I mean is that really, when the story is on, it is on and firing at all cylinders because it is so easy to get lost and wrapped up in everything. But then there's just this hard shift where the game just becomes going from set piece to set piece to set piece, and the lulls between those points can get really stale. Maybe I did myself a disservice here by playing this with my brother, but the fact that we could so easily fall into conversations about literally nothing, despite being so interested in what's going to happen, I think says a lot about the game. It just seems that there's these points in the game where so little is going on that you just are forced to entertain yourself. Now, like I said, I don't know how much of this feeling is due to the situation of how we played, but during the middle of the game it was really noticeable as there aren't really any scares, with no real goal or reason for what you're doing other than survive and move forward. And this is all such a bummer, as I don't want to end on a bad note as I really do recommend The Evil Within. 
Admittedly, we also did talk a lot about our personal theories during all that, but I just think that that time could have been better used for, I don't know, some kind of story progression, character progression, I don't know, man. Just something? It's just rough. Now, my brother and I are still actually really excited to play the sequel, and we plan to do so really, really soon. It's just, I'm torn, and I'm actually really interested to hear what you guys have to say about it all and what your take is. Maybe I'm just off base here, I don't know. Either way though, what I can absolutely recommend is that you pick up The Evil Within again for the season. It's the perfect Halloween game to break out. Its atmosphere and mood are just spooky enough to get those hairs tingling, the gameplay is fun and fast, and the story isn't too serious to really drag down the mood. So whether you've played it before or not, get with your loved ones, pop some corn, and just enjoy it. Enjoy the season. It's Halloween, goddammit. And the world may be ending, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy some spooks with your family. Now, I know how corny this kind of ending is, but honestly, guys, stay safe and stay inside. I know it's lame and we all do stuff for the coming holidays, but it's just not worth it right now, alright? So, have a happy Halloween, and it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would like and comment. And subscribe if you want to see more. Subscribe? Subscribe? <laughs> Can't talk. It really does mean a lot to me, though. Um, so, until then, uh, I'll have more for you guys real soon. I'm gonna not wait another year to post a video, I swear. I promise. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, have a good night. Have a good Halloween. Stay safe. Later. Wow, 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 wow.